For the first panel of this morning is the like strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this panel is to connect and communicate with citizens. This panel is important for government sectors, bodies, and services. Because today, social media strategy must move beyond tweets and likes. So let us now welcome our moderator for this panel, founder and social director of Social Grooves, one of Malaysia's top online personality, Christopher Tak. Right. Uh, so I've got the pleasure of um, starting the panel after the delivery speeches. Uh, and we're supposed to be very casual. So uh, uh, just, uh, just a very casual introduction. Um, yeah, so we, we know who Rizmel is already. He's done his self-introduction. And I think we're all very impressed with this young man uh, <laughs> who is uh, now heading the, uh, uh, the social media week. And then on the far left, we have ourselves um, a, a man of anal analysis, an analytical person who, is, uh, who runs uh, Berkshire uh, that uh, monitors social media and I guess produce a lot of intelligence out of the data that they do, right? Uh, and uh, these two gentlemen here today will be uh, discussing on, on the, uh, the topic of today, um, the likes strategy. But before I go into this, I think we should have some kind of casual warming up because, you know, it's still uh, some early in the morning. Some people are still, uh, uh, you know, not used to waking up early. So let's all stand up. Let's all stand up, guys. Come on. Casual, casual exercise. Don't worry, you won't sweat. I don't think you can sweat ever in this place anyway. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's stretch ourselves. Hands in the air. Hands in the air. All right. So one, two, three. Now to the side. One, two, three. To the front. <laughs> All right, okay, hold your hands this way. Turn out and squeeze. Okay. All right, no belly button showing. Good, all right. All right, have, have, have an applause yourself. <laughs> okay, you may sit, you may sit. Okay, that's the uh, casual exercise. Is everyone awake now? Yeah? Is everyone awake now? I can't, I can't hear you. All right, good, good. If everyone's awake, then we can start the show. Uh, remember, today is all about social media. It's not just about us sharing. It is also about, um, you know, your sharing. Whatever you listen today, whatever you learn, share, share about it, tweet about it, so that everybody know that you are learning something uh, this morning. Okay, uh, because at the end of the day, you know, information cannot be kept secret. It can only be flow. What, what, what needs to happen instead is to uphold ethics and respect at all times. So that's, that's the only thing that we ask uh, for today. So um, uh, without further ado, we're going to just progress through the slides. Uh, and what's going to happen next is uh, we're going to have some discussion uh, among the uh, panelists and uh, uh, maybe open it to the, the floor for some uh, question and uh, answer and question. You know, again, very, very casual. Um, and I hope that you guys will enjoy the session. So um, maybe, uh, who, who, Khalid, Rizmel? Yeah? So Rizmel will begin the session with his slides. Can I stand? Yes, yes, please. Schedule, schedule this time. I can't really see the screen right here, but yeah, my eyes are not that good. <laughs> Anyways, again, hi guys. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning, everyone. Tak cukup kuat lah. Good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, basically, government and the new media. Uh, I myself, when I was uh, appointed by Sahu to be the vice president uh, this year, uh, it was very interesting enough for him to say that we're going to come up with something different, something new for this, this year's program, which is government and the new media. And coincidentally, I work for the government. I work for the whole ministry. Uh, I'm working under the minister, deputy, deputy prime minister of Malaysia. Uh, so it's, it's, I am not probably the best guy in comparison to many of the government people here to talk about government and the new media. But I'm talking based on my experiences, based on what I've gone through on a personal level and, and how I, I was able to interact with people of different areas and different characters. So as you can see, it's, it's, very, it's a very important uh, age of time that we live in today, especially on the government side. I think it's important for them to always you know, be in connected and communicate with, with citizens. Uh, well, in Malaysia, we have about 30 million, if I'm not mistaken, 30 million uh, Malaysians, including Malay, Chinese, and Indian. Uh, it's very diversified, uh, very multicultural. So the way we approach certain groups of people, it's, it's very different. Uh, in the ministries, we have our own social media team that works uh, on a daily basis to basically tell people and share ideas and share the policies that we come up 
or the, that the ministers come up in the parliament uh, to bring down back to the people and especially bring down to the grassroots. And myself, as you know, today as the vice president and also a youth leader, I go down and tell people about the policies and you know, you, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. And at times, people criticize us for not making use of it. Uh, but I think as, as the criticism goes on and on, we, we are tired of the criticism. Uh, we, we start making use and of all the tools and the social medias that we have uh, in, in the recent times. So as, as you can see, many of the governments right now, for example, uh, in the campaign, presidential campaign of Barack Obama, uh, I, was, I was able, I guess, Christoph, I can share a bit of my experience here, right? Uh, in 2012, I was able, I was studying in the U.S. for about three and a half years. I was in Iowa, in Des Moines, Drake University, Des Moines. I had a chance to work with the state uh, representative, and I had the chance to also work with the congressman Keith Ellison, and then went on to, you know, for a short stint working for the Obama campaign in 2012 for the re-election campaign. So it was a very fun time, very challenging. I was able to travel 27 states, but it was it was very interesting. Like I told you in my keynote speech, that while Obama, President Obama, was was a character of his own, he was special, he was charismatic, he was confident. He was able to communicate with people in every areas of, of the field. Uh, but social media played a huge role in, in, in his presidential campaign. Uh, while I was there, I was able to study how they were able to make use of you know, the social media, the Facebooks and the Instagrams and the Twitters. The amount of followers that he has on Facebook is tremendous. Um, but that also because of the team that he had. Uh, so. When I bring that back and I, when I talk to the ministers here in Malaysia, we have many different ministers that have used social media very well, like our you know, cool, you know, good-looking young minister, you know, YB Khairi Jamaluddin, who is very prominent in social media. He has made use of the social media to basically you know, tell his ideas and share his stories. The same things with my, uh, with my boss as well, Yamak Bohamad, Deputy Prime Minister as well, Datuk Sri Dr. Amazai Amidi is able to use some, of, some parts of his social media on his YouTube channel to share his interviews and, and things like that, to share with the public. So I think there are many ways for us to use this, but I think today we'll be able to find out, as we have many different speakers, Khalid would be the best person to basically, and Christoph as well, would be the best person to tell you more in depth. Uh, I'm speaking based on my experience. I'm not an expert here, but I think it's, it's a well-versed experience that I can be able to share with you guys, and you guys can make use of, of this. All right. Uh, okay, these are the examples. Uh, even in our ministry as well, the whole minister, we have our own Instagram where we share our programs and ideas and the policies. And uh, in our government, governmental agencies, uh, with the drug agencies and many others, we're able to communicate with people. Uh, hence, they're able to show you know, their policies and ideas and share and, and do a lot of different things and even provide their complaints uh, to the government now. So the government will be able to take their actions and then do something about it on the grassroots level. Uh, well, as you can see on the, the slide, uh, afraid of Twitter, uh, there's been obviously a lot of criticism with the government in Malaysia, maybe you know, taking a few you know, tough stands. Maybe you know, one of the news, Malaysia Insider was, was blocked and, and, and all that. Uh, to be fair enough, I think, to be fair to everybody here, I think. It's important for me to actually tell you guys this, like I told in my keynote speech as well, that it's, it's very hard in today's world to differentiate uh, what is the real news and with the, the false, false news that we, we, we are being feed to in the social media. Uh, it's, it's tough at times when the government, I mean, in this sense, I, I can agree that in the gov government may be a bit slow in managing their, their, their ideas, policies, and coming back with statements if on the other side or people from outside were to criticize the government. Uh, for example, I think social media and Twitter or Facebook, uh, the IS, Islamic State, they call it Islamic State. I mean, the threat of the uh, Islamic, Islamic jihadism and extremism, they use social media, uh, like the Arab Springs as well. They use that very, very well uh, to basically portray and penetrate to the different governments and uh, many different countries. So I guess it's important for us to take measures as the government is here and we're able to do this program today, I think we'll be able to find out ways to counter all those, those negative effects coming from outside into the country. 
Uh, as you can see, well, I'm just going to read this out. Top institutions in Ecuador, the UK and Chile have Twitter followers that is more than 4% of the domestic population. I'm not sure about statistics in Malaysia, maybe a bit less than that. But I think we, we are working on it because we realize the power of social media. I personally realize the power of social media that I wouldn't be here today even you know, without the social media and the people that I have, the followers that we have today, that you guys wouldn't be able to make it here today. Okay. Okay, I'll just, um, since we are going like really too serious uh, on countries and governments, I'd like to go back, back to basics again on, on why people go back, uh, why people are in social media. I did an analysis on this, I'll read on psychology of people and actually it's the validation, you see. It's the term that you cannot be happy alone. You need validation from others. So every time you get likes, we get uh, those, those love things from Instagram and Twitter, we actually feel that we are appreciated, we feel happy. But right now, uh, Facebook has a lot more complex validation progress, uh, and I'm not sure how the algorithm are going to play out. So right now, if you understand the Facebook algorithm, the more that you like something, the more that Facebook will feed you the same thing over and over again. So be careful. Last time you used, so you have to look before you like something. You have to, don't just feed the likes freely or you will be only processing the same thing and you will only be in a, in a bubble of your own, social media bubble of your own. So uh, this is from Franco Amalfi. Governments don't need fans and followers, they need reputation building. So it's different from uh, businesses or personalities because if according to Facebook likes, Lisa Surihani would be our Prime Minister right now. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how many likes that you have. It's only a number. It's a, it's a gauge. It's not absolute thing. And there are other things that can be measured, like sentiment, like uh, engagements, that should be uh, uh, you know, put as KPI on your performance as social media for governments. So there, uh, this is quite complex. Uh, this is from uh, OACD, I got, I got the statistics. Different governments have different uh, objectives. So before the government, uh, and any government institutions, ministries, or agencies, they want to launch their social media campaign, they should understand, I think, what are the objectives. Out of 12 countries, uh, nine countries say that it is to improve public communication. So we have to understand that governments have totally different objectives compared to personal or business social media accounts. So it's totally different. It's uh, some, uh, and different government have different objectives. So at the same time, Facebook likes and tweets are unreliable. Yes, they are measurable. These are the numbers. We are so interested in seeing numbers and numbers again. But I believe in social media, there's a subjective element where you cannot count. And this is where the human part comes in. You have to analyze and see and gauge using your own feel and experience in social media to see whether how the sentiment affects you, how uh, the public's uh, perception, and this cannot be in numbers. It has to be in words and translation uh, and uh, given. So from what I've observed, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, I listed down five reasons why uh, Facebook likes and tweets are quite unreliable to be as the absolute measurement. First is that they are fake accounts, right? Yep. Chris? Yep. They have a lot of we fake accounts. Some. Yeah. We, 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 I, I've been investigating and it's impossible for all these accounts to be real. And secondly, likes are so easy to buy. It's so easy to buy and it's cheap. For, <laughs> for like one, uh, for 10 USD, you can get like 100 likes. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And uh, the third thing is like like or retweet does not mean endorsement. Just because I like something, it doesn't mean an endorsement. Just because I retweet something, it doesn't mean that I agree with the statement. Mm. And uh, like does not m give a good measurement of how people agree in the subject. And the last one, this is, I'm a little bit guilty of this as well. <laughs> Trolling and sarcasm. Just because someone said you like them, it yeah. doesn't mean you know. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's a complex social media world. You know, even the uh, analytics, even the up to date, the latest analytics that can measure, they cannot measure sarcasm. 
How can any app measure sarcasm? That's where I come in. You cannot measure through the numbers. You need human intervention to see all these uh, social media things. Um, okay, so I'll just continue. So, uh, in order for governments to engage in a modern, responsible and ethical way, it takes two to tango. So, you cannot have a modern informed government without having a modern, engaged, educated constituents of the people. So they need to be educated as well. I believe in Malaysia, we have not come yet to a social media maturity yet. No. We haven't come yet. There are a lot of uh, trolling going around and uh, very vicious, very, very vicious, uh, what do you call it, uh, trolling, uh, painting caricatures and all that. That is very unethical and even rude. Actually, there's a, uh, you don't have to go do so far. And a simple example is, if any of you dare to do a review page, you know very well that Malaysians don't like to give positive reviews. We only like to give negative reviews, and I think it's true for uh, Asian countries at most. So in terms of maturity, yes, we are definitely not uh, in uh, one of the more uh, modern uh, uh, countries where you know, we are more positive. Uh, here, we, we, we like to complain, but when it's good, we don't really want to say it out. So that's one of the uh, problems that we face. Yeah. Hmm. So um, just now, uh, Rismel was saying on uh, on um, the, that uh, there are wrong facts being disseminated. There are false information being disseminated in social media. So I share with you guys my experience with two different ministries that uh, I provided social media reporting with. So I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't name the ministries, but they are very, two distinct uh, characteristics. One ministry was very active in social media. The other was not so active. In fact, they were, they were not active at all. So the difference is that when you have issues, the, the, the first ministry that is active in social media, they, 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 they are quick to put out the, the truth of the issue. They are quick to address the issue, put out what is actually happening. So the result of that, People are not so noisy about that. People, when they, when, when, when they receive communication from that ministry, they don't, uh, they don't comment, they don't criticize as much. Compared to the second ministry, which are not very active in social media, they receive a lot more issues, a lot more, uh, a lot more comments, negative uh, from uh, social media, from our monitoring system. So I can say that if you don't engage, if you don't put out the truth, the lies will come out. If you don't fight uh, the, the, the lies and you let it happen, it will come out. It's, uh, i give a, a short example about anti-vaccine. In 1994, someone produced a paper that vaccination is harmful. That paper is wrong by medical standards. But because the doctors and nurses didn't engage, didn't really put out, now uh, anti-vaccination has, has become a very strong belief. Even celebrities believe in it, but it's not based on any medical science at all. So that's the dangers when you let the, the false information just to go through without any intervention. Chris, anything? All right. Um, so we've gone this far. And uh, I actually haven't even got to the topic of, uh, you know, why, why are we even discussing on this? But so far, can I have a whole of uh, hands? You know, how many of you have been understanding what, what has been uh, said this far? Yeah? Hands? Okay. Okay. So good. So basically, let me just... Rehash, rehash everything from what Rizmal shared with us first. So now we know that social media is real. Social media is, is, is what people think about the real world, right? It's all about perception. If you say something is good, chances are if they don't know the real thing, they will think it's good. I think we can see many examples of governments, brands, uh, companies uh, uh, using social media to, to provide a perception that helps you know, their, their, their purpose, their own uh, uh, real reason. But in government... Things are not the same, you know, we are, we are not about buying uh, uh, your, your, your happiness, you know, so that you will buy from us. It is not a product, it is not a uh, service, uh, it is more than that, it is a government, it is for the, uh, for the rakyat. So again, um, what, what, what we'll be sharing is that likes is not uh, the everything, yeah, people are smart, the rakyat are getting smarter as they see more information that, you know, it's a free flow, we have to identify what is the right uh, facts and what are not? Uh, uh, what are the false uh, false facts? And and then you have uh, um, the uh, you know the government and, and institutions needing to push out the real truth, yeah. right? And I I'm a real example of um, 
of uh, 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 this kind of thing. I manage celebrities and investors and, uh, and even ministers, uh, one of which is uh, uh, Dato, uh, uh, Lee Chong Wei and, uh, of course, uh, Harvey Skandar himself. And, and uh, all of you know about uh, Dato Lee Chong Wei's uh, alleged uh, doping case, right? Yeah, that made our Dato fall from one, number one to number, uh, I think, seven, you know, within that, that three months. And then after all the investigation, after everything, it found, it found out that it was, a, it was an accident. It was not doping. I mean, can you imagine? Dato has, has, has worked so hard to get to where he is and would he do something like that just to maintain? He doesn't need to. Yeah? And imagine if I didn't uh, uh, talk to him and say, you know, you need to manage your social media because you don't, want to have, you don't want the same thing as the proton thing to happen a long time ago. That time he don't have social media, you know, lies were out there and then, you know, he was slandered and he had no way to reach out except for newspapers, but you know, let's face it, not, not all of us read newspapers, right? So because of this whole doping issue, we are able to uh, disseminate the real information, you know, working with the government, working with Kyrie, uh, YB Kyrie, and, uh, and a few uh, uh, very um, trustworthy portals. We, are, we managed to, to subdue this whole case, and then he got his, uh, uh, his, uh, his, his suspension uh, cleared, and you know, he could play immediately after that. Yeah, and then now he climbed that up to number two. You see, imagine what would happen if the, 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 this false facts and allegation and rumours are left uh, to spread. Imagine his life shattered. Imagine that he, he cannot be our world number one uh, player again. That is how serious that we have to treat um, social media. This is how serious that we have to treat the, the reaction in which when people say lies, we counter with truth. You know, that is also very why it's so important for every government agency, every, every uh, brand, every person to have their social media presence felt so that we can say our piece in, uh, in, in reality. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that, that is what I take so far. We've seen the same thing happening all over the world. Everybody has the same troubles. Everybody has the same uh, issues. Uh, in fact, the government is also uh, expanding their, the, the uh, internet, right? I mean, the, to even the rural areas. So everyone has uh, free access to information and... These are the things that uh, is, is being worked on uh, in order to achieve uh, uh, full connectivity yeah? and, and being able to, to receive feedback, being able to do things like uh, uh, integrating social media with uh, uh, e-government. Yeah? Uh, do you know our passport from, I think, about two years back? You have to wait for what, one month, right? Then after that, it's three, uh, 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 seven, uh, seven days. Then now, it's only... No, sorry, three hours. Then now, it's, uh, no, sorry, three days. And now, it's three hours. One hour, sorry. So that's, that's how powerful social media is. And imagine if we use the full uh, uh, utilization uh, with, you know, working with the government and the right yet, uh, what could we achieve? So that is what I've been taking so far. And I hope that you guys uh, also understood all these points. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, and okay, I, I just, think I'll just let... I'd just like to mm. get... Uh, just now I gave uh, an example of the vaccine. But maybe we, uh, if we are more familiar with the local... Uh, uh, local uh, social media environment. In the last election, if you remember, there were a lot of people were voicing that there were blackouts in the elections. A lot of people believe that this actually happened. People changed their status, uh, Facebook status to, 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 to black and uh, there were 250,000 people who gathered from all over Malaysia and gathered in a stadium. But an actual thing, there was no blackout that actually happened. But people believe that this thing actually happened. And they were willing to, 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 to spend money and, and, and protest and come all the way to KL. But that didn't actually happen. I myself tried to find out. So this is the dangers of social media that if, if we tend to put in ourselves, in our own social bubbles that, uh, that we created on our own by just liking all that we like, then we'll just see all that we want to believe. So this is the danger. So that's how um, I think government should, uh, should uh, intervene and put out the facts so that people would not be keen to believe on what they want to believe. And uh, government are not like businesses. It's not a popularity contest. Government have to take hard stands. You know, they cannot just follow the people. So if something is criticised, government, uh, if you are working for a government agency or government body, you have to take it the hard way. And it's, it's not an easy... But being part of the government, you have to take the stand. If uh, the people are allowed to choose, then what's the role of the government? They can voice out and you can take the public perception. But at the end of the day, the government is still responsible for the people. So I think... Uh, 
You know, I think uh, I can attune to that on a personal level. You see, um, a lot of things in the government that we do. Uh, we, I, before I got into the government, uh, I was studying in the US, like I told you guys. Uh, I, I probably had some, you know, common ideas with a lot of the young people towards the government. The government is not doing anything for the young people. And I'm not working towards, you know, developing the youth, uh, youth leaders that we have in the country. But you know, I've been working uh, in the ministry for almost three and a half years now. And I see that we work extremely hard. And I think Sahul can atone to this as well. We go down to meet a lot of the young people. And a lot of st our stories are not being told. To a certain extent, maybe it's our own fault for not doing whatever we need to be doing on the social media. But at the same time, my point is simple here. It's, it's all about you know, being there and understanding the situation. And I was able to witness that being someone from outside of the government and being someone in the government now. And we're doing a lot of different work. We're going down, we're meeting people. I'm not taking you know, any bias stand because I'm the government, I'm from the government side, but this is the real fact. Uh, a lot of things you, you see in the social media uh, can to a certain extent be true. But I think what I would like you know, to advise or suggest to each and every one of you here, whatever news or social media news that you see on Facebook or Twitter, before you actually you know, start viraling it, start sending it and sharing it with other people, read and understand it. Make your own research, understand it before you viral it to anybody else. And if you think it's true, then it's, it's your rights to do that. The government can say, it cannot say, that, oh, you cannot do that regardless. We would understand that. But I think it's important for a lot of the young people. They're very, you know, it's, it's, it's a fast-paced world. Very impatient. You want to know things very fast. Uh, so sometimes it's a bit hard. Kita wants to escape from the government side ni, to do a lot of the things on the covering side. But I can atone to that when, when Khalid is mentioning that. But let's be fair. Guys, uh, there's a movement out there. Uh, now that we're on this topic, it's called uh, Citizen, citizen uh, uh, Journalism. And uh, uh, it's a group that, is, that consists of both uh, people who are pro-government and also anti-government. And what they do in that group is that they share all these latest updates of what people you know, say about stuff. And then there will be people there who will investigate. Yeah? And those people are not authorities. They are not, they are not uh, government. They are, not, uh, you know, they are people like you and me. People who, ha who, who work for, for someone or own their own businesses. And you know, we, ha we want the, uh, uh, the, the fact that we want that, that privilege of being able to share news that are trustworthy. Because otherwise, how do people trust us? Right? We are people of integrity. And we want to make sure of that. So uh, citizen uh, journalism is, is something that all of us should adopt. And that way, you know, no one can say lies. Not, not the government, not the, uh, not, not the uh, opposition, or, or no, don't, even, no, don't even talk about politics. Talk about the, uh, the health, uh, the medical science world. Right? People saying that this, this, uh, this ingredient will help you to save uh, your life, can cure cancer. You know, a, lot of, a lot of lies are out there. And what's, what's important is that we take the, uh, uh, the initiative to uh, debunk that. Because trust, trust, uh, trust me, all of, a lot of us spend a lot of time on our phones instead of doing real work. So, you know, instead of just uh, looking at videos and, uh, and YouTube and even Vine <laughs> these days, or Snapchat, you know, just do a bit of Googling. Find out from, from, uh, from the right sources and then you can say like, wow, actually this, this thing that you've been sharing about is not true. Remember that article about uh, Malaysia having the most coldest uh, uh, season of the year? You know, something like, like even want to snow, you know. They said they don't even want to snow. And people share that. Can you imagine that everybody was sharing their things like, wow, finally got snow, no need to go Genting Island, you know. Genting Island also do have snow, <laughs> you know. And people share that. Can you imagine, like, like what is going through their heads? Why would they share something that says Malaysia with snow? And, and you know, we are in Katulisti, wow, thank you, but we don't want any snow. <laughs> you want snow, you can go to UK and uh, 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 anywhere else in the world where there's snow, but we love our, our, you know, our climate and we want to keep it that way. But you see, that, that shows that there are a lot of people out there that just want to get your shares, your likes, your attention by spreading uh, false news. Khaled, you want to add to that? Yeah, um, some people, I think they want to get uh, sensational. They are professional people having uh, Facebook pages and all that. And they want to get more likes, more hits that will generate income for them. So they, they create sensational uh, topics and headlines that doesn't even re relevant to the content itself. So there are a lot of lies going out there. So for government agencies, um, just like in the slide here, social media is a new battlefield for truth. So, uh, in order to have uh, your people, your tanks, your army, your personnel, you've got to deploy the right uh, 
the right weapon. So you got to train your people. These are the people who are supposed to defend. Then even if they don't put their own postings, maybe they can like, maybe they can share the things. So the first thing I think uh, government agencies need to do is to train their own personnel to become part of the team of the process. I mean, who are going to defend yourself is if not your own people. So that is where I think uh, most uh, government agencies. I mean. Uh, are, are lacking. Their own people are not even supporting their own initiatives, their own people. So the first thing, maybe you should, uh, government uh, ministries or agencies should put out a, a policy, a guidelines, a do and don'ts, and, and empower these people, and empower uh, people to um, uh, give them knowledge on how to use social media so they can participate, and then you can develop more, and then more shares, because in social media, many people forget that first part of being good in social media is being social being friends so uh, being being uh, being connected to others that's the part of first part of social media that people don't understand we take it too serious we go too far we forget the essential part that social media is about validation about making people being feeling that they are connected to others so if you have your own people supporting your own initiative sharing it liking it retweeting it then you have uh, your own force that I mean, even like if you have a small uh, unit of 50 people, if every day they share their likes, it's it's going eventually it's going to grow faster than rather than paying uh, uh, other people to do it. So, uh, in essence, you have to train these people. You have to give a budget. You have to empower them uh, and uh, encourage participation from that, so that your social media accounts will develop further and grow and grow. And this is what uh, how you you counter the lies in the long run. I think I think we have to agree that uh, the days of uh, uh, cyber troopers uh, likes retweets uh, of, uh, from fake accounts is is gone past. It's gone now. It's gone. Now we are yep. in the age of uh, UGC, user generated content, where you provide information and knowledge to empower, to increase participation, and for development. And and these guys will share with you know with with their own opinions. And yeah. these opinions will support them. And I, I think uh, a very good uh, example of this is the, uh, the, the youth parties of all the uh, government agencies all around the world, including Malaysia, right? We're, we're no longer the, uh, the, you know, or just like, just share, you know, without providing your, uh, your point of view. It's about sharing this and saying, why? Why I support this? Why I support that? Why is this policy good? You know, why am I supporting this leader? It, it's, it's all about the, the three keywords that we've seen uh, just now. Uh, what do you think? No, no, I think uh, I foc I would of all the three words, I think it's very important uh, we focus on the empowerment, and I think uh, that's what I think from the government side, all the ministries and all the government agencies within the ministry, and maybe the youth organisations that have maybe MBM and many other different organisations can go out and you know have this kind of programs, and this I guess is a great empowerment for for a lot. For of example, people. the Padana Fellowship. Yes, right? yes, the Padana Fellowship. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of the alumni of the fellow Padana. I'm also a youth, parliament, youth parliamentarian. So it's, it's in a way with the social media. Uh, for example, the youth parliamentarian, we, we went through campaigns. The voting system was made online. So we had to campaign mostly on the social media, regardless if you wanted to campaign outside and go to the ground and make people. But a lot of it was done in the social media. And we had, <laughs> so we had to post our pictures. We had, we had our own taglines. It was, it was a really fun interesting experience for the first time and I think this kind of platform or this uh, medium would be, you know, many more mediums would be open to more mediums like this in the future and I think a lot of governments, not only here in Malaysia, but government agencies and other agencies outside as well uh, applying this thing. But I think the, the, power, the, the most powerful thing about empowerment is it instills that in, your, in yourself. The knowledge, it's, it's important. 10 or 20 years ago, you, we wouldn't have Wikipedia, Google, or whatever. I, I asked my parents, you know, how did you study? And you get all your references. You have to go to the library and you meet people and talk. And you know, today, especially during my time, I think I was very lucky to go to school. And you had all the, the, the facilities and the, the easy way out of studying and getting into social media and you know, getting information there as well. So I think I would suggest, again, you know, use this kind of empowerment to empower others. And I through social media, I think you look at... Great example of celebrities, and you know, I look personally to Barack Obama, for example, and I think uh, look at his quotes and the way he, he talks in social media and things like that. I think that's a great example of how many of the leaders out there. That's good and bad for sure, uh, but you take all the positives and you throw away all the negatives.
yeah, that's it. Um, talking about Obama, yeah, I, I respect him and I think uh, he's a very witty person and he's a funny person, but not all of his actions can be copied and directly in Malaysia. You have to look at the environment. I mean, recently I look at this video where Obama called these two comedians Key and Peels and they make a joke basically. But uh, but in the US environment is quite all right. But then in Malaysia, I don't know how it's going to be accepted. So you have to look uh, at your environment. Don't just just take uh, something from the overseas and put it here. So it has to be, you have to consider the environment that you are in, what kind of uh, people that uh, uh, are you with. It's a culture, cultural it's difference. It's a cultural difference, yeah. I mean, we're, we're Malaysians, right? I mean, <laughs> we are very, you know, multicultural. We are very, very polite, very humble, friendly people. I think we have our own way of doing it. Probably when we look into the US, it say people say, "Oh, Malaysia got poyo lah, poyo lah, cari lepo ni kan." But in certain other ways, we, we we can adopt those kind of ways here locally, made it made it, made it in local, uh, with the right you know environment and the right people in the content for sure. Any questions so far? Yeah, if not, we'll just go on with the slides first and then later we, we can uh, so get a few. I, I've gathered a few samples on how uh, the government uh, can improve quality of government. For example, you can use social media to combat crimes. For example, uh, I, I'm actually uh, quite proud of uh, Malaysian police. I mean, it's one of the most active social uh, government agencies on Twitter and social media uh, and Facebook as well. The, I mean... Our IGP is very active on Twitter and once he had said a statement that if he is not him, he'll, he'll have another 125,000 people on social media watching it. So, so we, this is a very good uh, proactive, mood, uh, proactive move from uh, the police of Malaysia to use social media to combat crimes and also to share information. What's more important, um, what's more important is to share information on the latest crime statistics, what is happening, so that people are, uh, are well informed. So this is how you use social media. You, you update where the, the, the crime statistics are, what people should be careful of. So those are in terms of uh, just crime. And also, uh, this is an example that uh, government agencies should uh, promote their activities to, and, and share what they are doing with the people. If the government uh, agencies, ministries share and have uh, more activities with the people, they will be closer, you know, they will be closer and uh, if uh, it would foster better relationship between the government agencies and the people. Because right now, uh, I think what we are seeing, there's, there's quite distance, it's quite distant. There's a, there's a big gap there between the people and the government. So they, this is where social media can help. They can show what the actions, just now like what Rizmel is saying. I know that the government workers work hard, they work hard, but unfortunately people don't know. Everyone thinks, almost everyone thinks that the government workers are lazy. I mean, that's the general thing that people, uh, the perception, but that's the wrong perception. They are all, almost equivalent uh, to uh, public or any businesses, but unfortunately that's, that's the perception and this drives the government workers even demotivate them. So what social media can help is to show that how these people work uh, on a daily basis, what activities they are gone, maybe not to go into so much detail but at least share their activities, what programs they are doing so people can participate and be part of their programs. So I'm just curious uh, from the crowd, how many of you use social media to uh, complain uh, so that you know, uh, the government agencies can, uh, can do something about it? For example, uh, road potholes, you know, uh, uh, crime and stuff like that. Uh, have you guys actually done so? All right, one person anymore? Two? So not not many of you, right? Are you, can you imagine the power? <laughs> of course, our own social media chambers committee will be uh, uh, very active in this. This is this is one of the reasons where uh, all of you can play a more active role, you know, to provide information so that our uh, government and the agencies can do um, you know more things to help. Yeah, uh, uh, the uh, there is an app like called My Hero uh, that's out there among all the other apps, My Distress and so on and so forth. And these apps aim to support um, uh, you know if you want to complain about say a pothole in, in this jalan or uh, 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 a theft case in in, uh, in in Pudu, you know it's it's something that helps um, the uh, agencies to collect data and then do something about it. But if you don't share, then what can we do? So you see, there is also a problem of facilities versus the response. You know, government agencies and, 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 uh, may come up with all kinds of uh, solutions, 
but if if our our right uh, yet don't uh, take advantage and use it then it's, it's of no use uh, you know i mean what what do you guys complain about usually can i can i just get someone to say public public transport okay what else food i know food everybody complains about food <laughs> what else yeah so sorry Long queue, yeah. I mean, these, you see, these are things that we, uh, the government cannot do anything, you know. It's, it's, it's things that, uh, uh, you know, your everyday uh, uh, complaints that uh, hopefully the private sector can support. But imagine if, if we complain about yeah. things that, that could, we could actually help with, you know, agencies could actually help with. That's yes. where I think uh, the government have to, uh, to, to set the expectation right. Because I think the expectation of people are too much sometimes. They expect the government do to end to end from their birth until they die to, 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 to support and provide them with everything. That's where people need to understand that the government has uh, limited ability, limited resources Then that must be shared to all the constituents. So uh, this is where yeah. social media, they can share, okay, my, our role is from here to here. The rest is it's up to you. You have to move from here. You have to get. You have to work hard as well. You have to get the money. And, uh, you know, we, uh, the government cannot provide for anything. I mean, I'm not taking the side of the government. What, but what I'm seeing is people have a very, very high expectation of the government. You know, they want the government to help here, help here. You know, but at the same time, it's limited resources. And with 30 million people, for example, in Malaysia, it's difficult. In any case, we are almost out of time. Uh, to us, we felt that we had a really discussion. I, I hope that you guys got something out of it. But I would like to open the floor to you know, one or two more questions just before we wrap up. This is a very interesting topic. And uh, Okay, so we have uh, <laughs> our own uh, fan, uh, speaker, fellow speaker. Can we have your question? So for all questions, let's keep it to how social media can work you know, between the government and the right cat and uh, we focus on that. Uh, hi, a uh, simple question. Do, uh, <clears throat> should ministries be also treated as brands? Wow. Okay, that's a, that's a tough question. Uh, how, how is that related though? I mean, uh, should ministries be treated as, as banks, did you say? Yeah, brands. All oh, like, right, like brands. Corporate brands, yes. How uh, brands are using social media, should ministries also treat themselves as brands and, and engage with, with their consumers, which are citizens of the country, that way? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe, I believe they are a brand of their own as well. They need to upkeep the reputation because the reputation will create the public perception of themselves. And public perception in the long run can either damage or make them uh, become successful. So as important as any business, uh, branding to business, a uh, branding uh, to, to ministries should be, uh, should be in, the same, uh, in the same light as well, I would say. So I, think, I think some ministries uh, have it easier to, 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 uh, as a brand rather than other ministries. For example, uh, KBS. Yeah? KBS is a lot more easier to, uh, to manage as a brand. And I think uh, YBKJ has done a good job. Uh, you know, everything you hear about KBS is like Fit Malaysia. Uh, you have the uh, 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 Ari Sukan Negara, uh, Ari Bili Negara. You know, they, 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 he's created a lot of uh, uh, brands and initiatives uh, to to uh, provide like some kind of service or uh, uh, touch points to its constituents. So for KBS, which is the uh, youth ministry, youth and sports ministry, it will be for the, the youth target. So for them, it's much easier to, to manage as a brand, but mm. not so for um, other ministries like the home ministry. Mm. I think uh, it's a lot more harder for, uh, for them. Uh, the, 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 what I think uh, <laughs> home ministry would be considered as the toughest ministry, one of the toughest ministries, if not the toughest. Uh, ministry to to basically brand themselves as you know because we basically have eight different agencies eight different agencies that cover security drugs uh, volunteers act and, and many many different you know really tough you know acts that that we have to but again I think the minister minister himself has done a good branding to promote uh, the whole ministry as a government body that is that is uh, had, have good principles, uh, strong in making decisions, and whether it's popular or not, it's uh, what matters is all about what's, peop what's right for the people. Uh, and I think I, that's what matters the most. I, I'd like to add that uh, the head, uh, for example, like what Rizmel said, uh, the minister acts for the ministry itself. This is, this is where social media plays a different, uh, uh, something that I found out. Generally, if uh, the head of a ministry, let's say the minister, his social media account will be more followed, more retweets than the KBS himself. Yeah. So the head honcho, the head of the ministry or the agency should be the spokesperson, should be the, the face 
of the, the ministry himself because people actually react better when they see a face to it rather than a symbol of a logo or ministry. Generally, uh, for example, uh, the rule of thumb is four to one. They would get more four times followers than the organization they are in. So I think the uh, consensus uh, in, uh, in our panelists is that, uh, yes, I think the uh, ministries can be brands, but maybe more of a personality, right? So they have a, a person that can put their, uh, uh, their, 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 their issues and woes to, instead of uh, a core building, you see a, a face that, that, uh, that acts in on behalf of the ministry. Uh, maybe one, more, one last question. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. Um, My salam. name is Norhayati. I'm also working, um, I'm one of, um, I'm a government servant. Um, my question is uh, just like to get some opinion on the connotation of um, government Twitter accounts or social media accounts. In general, most uh, government um, social media accounts are more on a serious note. But uh, we all know that you know most of us are on social media because it's fun, you know. Yeah. It's um, it's it's sort of an escapism from our daily work. So to get to actually get attention in the social media, you need to create some buzz or you know be witty. You either you just get you just need to attract attention. So my question is that, in your opinion, how do we draw the line? If let's say you're handling the social media for the government, where do you draw the line to maintain the level of seriousness as well as you know, create uh, attractive contents to get attention from the general public? Uh, not only the followers, but just you know, the general public. Thank you. Thank you, Nurhayati. I think uh, that's a very brilliant question. The question is, um, you know, where, where do you draw the line between how uh, government agencies, con you know, use their social media to attract? The line is very thin, I would say. <laughs> it's a very thin line. I'm, I mean, I understand in social media, you have to, to create uh, the creative, uh, to, in order to create a buzz around a certain postings. You have to be witty, you have to be funny. Um, but there is a line that you have to cover where, you shouldn't lie about things. I think uh, you shouldn't. You should tell, still tell the truth. You shouldn't lie. You shouldn't make uh, uh, be too sarcastic. Uh, these are the things that you can only, uh, you know, you uh, cannot be described in detail. But you should have a feel for it. Uh, the seriousness level should be there as well. I, I was impressed by uh, Jabatan Bomber recently. They had a really good uh, response to some questions. They were. It's okay to make jokes. I mean, it's okay to make jokes, but as long as you don't, need, do, don't do it too often until you lose your purpose of seriousness, until you, people stop believing in you. One day, maybe in, once in a week, one, one in two or three days, it's okay to, to crack a joke that shouldn't be you know, too, uh, too negative or too critical of someone. But you shouldn't do it too often because you are part of the government and you are the face of the government as well. You represent an organization. It's okay to make a joke, but where do we cross the? Uh, where is the line? But I would say that uh, as long as you don't lie, you don't uh, attack others, you don't belittle others, you don't, uh, uh, you don't. Uh, the statement doesn't hurt others and it's not repeated too often. Then it's still all right. And there's no like a clear cut measure where I say okay. Uh, the joke should not be uh, on uh, uh, people and negative things, uh, mm. but it's uh, you. You got to have a gut feeling on it. After a while, if you are, I, I mean, if you are in social media, you practice it. You kind get of a feel. So experience counts. So the longer you are practicing with social media, then you can see directions coming from others. Then you see, you can understand, you can gauge for yourself. Okay, uh, this uh, this is the line that we uh, we draw now. Yeah, I I totally agree, uh, Khalid. I mean. The uh, Bomba, if you've seen the, 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 their Twitter account, so they recently, they, they've always been updating about the uh, uh, issues, you know, uh, ac uh, accidents, uh, videos of, uh, you know, the everyday right yard uh, sharing, so that people are aware of, of the things that are happening and what they are doing, uh, countering it. So sometimes they get all these uh, funny responses by people who are a little bit more <laughs> not as smart as um, other people, and, and their response is smart. You know, they don't, they don't respond like, you know, to say that you're, you're dumb, you know. They, they respond in a very uh, witty manner, yeah, in, 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 in their language, in, in Malay, in English. And 
And you know, these things become like a, a sensation. You know, people, people uh, took the picture, shared with it, and then suddenly, uh, it, I think the, the, the Bombang guys must be very proud, you know. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, from, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firefighter and I'm proud of our, our brand. Yeah. So I think, I think we have to stick a little bit of, uh, uh, we cannot be too serious. Yeah. And this, at the same time, we have to always show what you said, you know, yeah. things that are real, facts, not, not sensationalized uh, things. And you know. you'll do mistakes in social media. Generally, you will do mistakes in social media. This is where you learn and you understand where the line is. Yeah, yeah, yeah agreed. So if there's, if there's nothing else, uh, uh, maybe we want like a last, uh, you know, last word on the, the right strategy. I mean, what, I mean the, the people here today are from uh, government agencies, uh, corporate. So what do you think should be their strategy to engage with their fans? Well, for me, uh, I think, uh, like from I said, own experience. My, my own experience would be, I think on the government side, we could do better. I mean, on the government side, the Malaysian government could do better to engage and have engagement programs, especially on social media, on how to educate, especially the younger ones, on how to use social media ethically. And I think banning or stopping, like I said on my keynote, it's not, it's not necessary. Uh, shouldn't be done, but I think it's important for you to, you know, educate these people. And like you said, we haven't, you know, achieved the maturity that we need. But maybe through this engagement, by educating these young people, we'll be able to get them to be more mature on social media and discuss issues uh, intelligently and focus on. And then, but at the same time, I think the public has to be more, you know, friendly to the government. Yeah. Listen first. Yeah. Uh, understand yeah. the issues, and then if you disagree, then it's okay. I mean, we, like, like I said, we agree to disagree on things, but. Uh, the, on don't be ideas. emotional. Yeah, don't be, be more constructive. Yeah. Uh, be more constructive. Be more objective. Yeah. Uh, most importantly, I think it's important. I mean, at the end of the day, the end goal is to create a better country, and right. one of the most powerful, you know, tools is social media at this moment of time. Thirty, forty years from now, I don't know what we're going to be using, but uh, at this point of time, social media should be the point where we we be able to connect the government or lessen the gap between the government and the public. And I think mm. all of us, regardless of wherever you guys are coming from, we all should work towards that and making this, uh, making this a reality. For all right, all thank you, Rizmel. And Khalid, any last words? Um, I'd just like to add, I think Rizmel uh, said what I want to say, but before you embark on a social media campaign or a social media endeavor, you should uh, uh, be aware, what do you want at the end of it? At the end of it, do you want reputation management? Do you want... Uh, and never go for the likes alone. Never go for the retweet, uh, retweets alone. Don't just gauge on the numbers. See the engagement. Uh, just like I said before, uh, use your own battalion of people that you have to, to make your own social media powerful before you, you use other things. And, uh, and even before that, you should uh, establish the do's and don'ts and guidelines so that people in your own agencies or ministries understand and uh, empowered with the knowledge in, uh, on how to use social media. The knowledge of social media should be uh, uh, prime. Uh, All right, great. Uh, can we have a round of applause for Ismail and Khalid? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Christopher Talk and uh, I'm the founder of Social Groups. I'm also in charge of the uh, social media tweets that you see up there. And uh, you know, Thank you so much for sharing so much. Uh, uh, I'm glad to announce that we are currently trending since uh, I think about an hour ago. So. Please, thank you. Thank you. Round of applause for yourself too. And I'll pass it back to MC.